Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with my review for uh, Tower of God Chapter 392 or Season 2 Episode 312. Uh, so I have actually had this semi ready trying to record it whenever I could since Tuesday, but between being super busy and it being storming like every single day, today's finally the first sunny, you know, well it was storming this morning, but this afternoon's finally the first sunny day I've had all week. Uh, so I'm finally getting to record. I have time and everything's lining up. So I'll be posting this after I get the natural Boku no Hero Academia and One Piece videos up today. Uh, and then after this, I'm still going to be working on The Walking Dead to do my live reaction to that. And the Beastars read-through for this week. I'm taking Magical Girl Raising Project, taking the week off. Uh, just updating you there since I'm behind on some things. Uh, but I plan to catch up with as much as I can today and tomorrow and pretty much just be caught up by then. Still need to catch up on comments though, so sorry if I haven't answered all of you yet, but I've been trying to get to at least some of you. Uh, also, some more things I want to talk about that are kind of general, but I'll save them for the end. Let's actually talk about this chapter first. I thought it was really, really good. I really liked it, and I feel like there was too much to talk about at the end of the live reaction where I was like, well, we had a lot of Bomb and Rachel stuff, and we had all this other world, like greater world type stuff that it's kind of, I need to take a minute and reread this and get my thoughts together. So uh, we had all that stuff, and I thought it was great because I loved all of the uh, stuff with Jinsung and with Yuan Sung and Misheni, all, all of that greater world stuff I thought was awesome. I'm really excited for it. And in addition to that, I thought that Bomb and Rachel got a lot of really good development. And it was about how I thought things would go, uh, if they fight, will it be interrupted? I think there's a very good chance of it. I don't necessarily want to say probably, but probably it'll get interrupted if Bomb and Rachel fight. But, uh, point is, starting from the beginning, Bomb interrupts Rack. He isn't going to let this, this fight go down without him getting, uh, some words in first. So he interrupts Rack and Rachel, and Yura goes after him, kind of making a good point saying, why do you keep following Rachel? She's made it clear she doesn't want you here following her around all the time. And that's honestly a very, very good point. Um, Bomb blows her back with his clear and black Shinsu, which is really cool. Uh, and then Bomb admits to himself, and this is actually kind of cool, he admits, okay, I was wrong to make this bet with Rachel. I was wrong to take her to the hidden floor with us. Because of that, Kunagra Agnes is hurt. Kind of throwing it a bit on himself, but he kind of did bring it on himself a little bit. And uh, he says that he wants to fight Rachel here and now and just settle things between them. Whether that's working things out or whether that... I, I honestly don't think he plans on causing her any real harm. He just wants to either shut her down and settle everything between them there by shutting her down or settle everything by coming to some sort of understanding through battle. Um, that seems to be the way he's going, because I just don't see Bomb's character at all being the kind of person like, I just want to fight and kill you. That's not Bomb whatsoever. Uh, then we cut away from that, we have Misheni and Jinsung fighting a bit. She uses this spear technique that they said they translated as Tres Quemos. And see, there were a few parts when I reread to take my notes that I thought were different, from when I first read during the live reaction, I thought this was Trace Quenos that time, and then rereading it was Trace Quemos, and I don't even think Quemos is a word in Spanish. Uh, but thank you to Martin Paletti. Martin Paletti brought up, I think they probably mean Trace Quernos, because um, that would be three horns, and it is a three pronged spear, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, then Machini is purposefully killing her own men in the crossfire while they're fighting. Jinsung can tell that that's what's going on, and she tells Jinsung about the orders. Not the Pobedal one, at least not yet, but at least about the Hell Train one and about the FUG one. So he starts thinking about Bomb and all of that, and she mentions that there's an army gathering at the last stop of the train, and the train's probably going to be getting there soon. It has to be close by now. Uh, then cutting back to the Bomb and Rachel stuff, Rachel speaks her case, and actually, again, 
the bad guys that make a good point are the best bad guys, I guess. A lot of people say that, and Rachel makes a pretty good point. She says that she's just competing in the tower like everybody else. She's screwing people over, she's doing what it takes to win, she's doing things that are either the same as or not as bad as what Kunagru Agnes and Andrasi have done themselves, and Kun has actually planned her death, so she's like, he has planned my death. I have planned his, we're kind of on equal footing here, I just happen to have won. And she makes kind of the best point of, Bama's never really had to feel desperation or will never feel desperation because he's kind of got this fate working for him. He has everything handed to him. And I think that's what's, that's probably making me feel more for Rachel than anything about Rachel. Rachel's still an asshole, but I kind of feel for her because Bomb is being given power and just being given something after something after something and he's being given so much that it actually makes me think you know Rachel kinda has a point it really isn't that fair um, then Minazuki appears Bomb handles it seemingly well so I'm not sure how strong the Minazuki actually is and something I noticed with Bomb we see the thorn behind him but it looks a bit larger than usual and I don't think he's in burnt chestnut form but he has the horns I don't think the horns mean burnt chestnut form because when he goes burnt chestnut don't they become physical horns but I think he just had the Shinzu horns this time so I'm I'm not completely sure but what I was thinking is what if the first thorn fi fragment is just fused in him now when it's the second one floating behind him or maybe we can only see the first one visible and the second one still invisible who knows um, but those were just some thoughts on what that art in the panel could mean um, cutting back to uh, the Masheni and Jinsung stuff, Masheni says, okay, I know about somebody, and see, I thought when I first read it in the live reaction, they said somebody who cares a lot about FUG, but then when I went back to reread and take my notes, it was somebody who FUG cares about a lot, which would obviously change it from being Karaka to being Bomb, but either way, she's like, the problem isn't that I know. The problem is that my father knows, and that he sent his own people to uh, handle that situation. So, since she said that separately from the army, the army could be, um, was it, could, could be Edwan's people, but what I might be thinking here is that Edwan might have sent his own people to infiltrate the train uh, before it gets to that army, and go about his own plans. So we have no idea what Edwan's going to do in this situation, which makes it even more exciting. Uh, then at the very end, we have a messenger from Zahard named Red Brubia, which is hella hard to say, and they read out Yu Han Sung's death sentence, and there's this big ship floating above that looks like another one of the anti-high-ranker weapons. Uh, and moving on to the blog next, the blog has me worried because see you talks a lot like Yuan Sung is just dying. He's like, yeah, Yuan Sung's done, it's all over. Of course he could be saying that though to just throw us off when Yuan Sung survives. Because I feel like they shouldn't kill Yuan Sung off here. They can. I mean see you totally can. But don't really feel like they should. Uh but uh yeah, a lot about Yuan Sung dying. He mentions that Bomb and Rachel have some key differences between them. When faced with a setback or a tough situation, we see that Bomb improves. And when faced with a setback or tough situation, we see that Rachel gets disheartened. Um, and that's one of the key differences between them. And another key difference that CU says is that Bomb is more focused and more struggling with a reason for climbing the tower. Whereas Rachel is more focused and struggling on climbing the tower itself. And I like that it's a difference between questions, why and how. Bomb is like, I'm super powerful, I can climb the tower, but why? Am I doing it to take down Zahard? Am I doing it to get my friends up the tower? To discover who I am? What? To become a god? Why am I doing it? Um, whereas Rachel's like, oh, I know why I want to get to the top of the tower, but how am I going to get to the top of it? So that's another really cool key difference between the characters. Um, and another thing that CU says, again, explaining more about Rachel and why he finds her likable, is that he says any person in the extreme life or death competition will do what Rachel is doing. She is what he considers to be a normal everyday person put into an extreme life or death competition. 
and that makes sense because like I said we've seen before Andrasi has betrayed and killed her own teammates she's killed people Kunaga Ragnus has killed people I'm pretty sure we've seen these characters have killed people they've betrayed people but and I saw some other people talking about this but Rachel is considered the bad guy because whereas we've seen them kill and betray people but they were just random scrubs we know nothing about but Rachel be is betraying and killing people that we know their story and we sympathize with them and if we sympathized with those other random nobodies maybe we would feel the same way about Kunagru Agnes or about Andrasi. So again it's really cool how deep and complex the characterization is there for Rachel and for Bomb too. I think Bomb got a lot of development this week. Uh, and the overall world building stuff is great as well. And I think that's about all I wanted to talk about this week. Yeah, I would give it as a score 9 death sentences out of 10. Uh, 9 out of 10 because I thought it was really, really good. Um, but yeah, I mean not perfect. Uh, so some things I wanted to talk about at the end. Oh god, I'm forgetting the name here. You know what? I'm going to just go to Twitter really quick so I can see it. Because uh, there was somebody who tagged me in a tweet who had made a Tower of God video. Uh, and I'm sorry, before now I hadn't heard of your channel. But uh, Nyadi Hemmings. And you know what? In the, um, in the comments, remind me if I forget, but in the comments I'll post a link to their video where they had a... Um, Tower of God character creation video that I thought was really cool. I liked it. I commented down there in his video. Uh, but I don't know that I'm going to make my own video doing the character creation thing. I kind of just put my thoughts in the comments of their video. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make my own because I just I want to focus on rereading, focus on actually staying up to date with the uh, reviews and stuff and uh, being able to answer everyone's comments. So it's just there's so much going on with the channel that I might not make my own video on that, but I say you should definitely check out theirs because uh, I liked it a lot. And one thing that I was going to say about that, for me of not having heard of the channel, it's one of these things where, and here's where I'm just going to go off topic and talk just about the channel in general. Uh, so if any of you care about that, just stick with me, or if not, you, you can leave or whatever. I'm just going to talk generally to you all. Um, but yeah, it's something more like, I used to watch, whenever a new One Piece chapter came out, I'd be like all over all the live reactions, all the reviews, all that kind of stuff. And I thought for a while, I was like, I read Tower of God and love it, and I'm so excited about it every single week, but nobody's doing anything about it. Uh, nobody's doing any videos or anything on it. So when I decided to finally start a channel, I was just going to do whatever I felt like. I was going to play games, do whatever. But of course, I'm working on the barest of barebone equipments, and uh, you can do things uh, pretty cheap uh, these days, but even pretty cheap is a bit too expensive for me most of the time. Um, but I just kind of was like, if nobody else is making videos on Tower of God, I want to talk about it, I want to do it. Uh, so I was like, I'll do live reactions and reviews for that. And I'm watching, or I'm reading One Piece every week anyway, I'll do One Piece. Uh, I'm reading Mon Musu every month, I'll do that. Reading Tower of, or reading The Walking Dead every month, I'll do that. And I kind of just added on stuff from there. I wanted to have a channel where, I always like when channels have a good community and the people can just talk <laughs> with each other. Um, and the comments aren't for lack of a better word, cancerous, or toxic, that's probably a better word, um, because people actually talk to the people watching their videos in the comments so that they know somebody's watching and they can communicate with the person, and it kind of makes the comments a better place. I, w I wanted to be like that, and I loved people doing Q&A videos with their comments, uh, so I wanted to do the same, and that added the <laughs> Q&A to the channel. Um, and things kind of spiraled on from there. But I found that as I spend so much time making these videos myself, I watch less of them. Because now there are a decent good few people making videos on Tower of God, but I only very rarely watch any of them because I'm just so busy doing my own uh, every week that I don't watch other people's as much as I used to. And that's the same. I used to watch a ton of people for One Piece, barely watch any anymore. Kind of rare. Uh, just because I'm focusing on it on my own. Uh, 
So it's kind of this weird thing that when you get into doing it yourself, you watch less of it. Um, but in addition to that, it's like, I spend a lot of time answering comments every single week too, so it's like, it's not like I have to go out of my way to find Tower of God discussion. I'm constantly behind on Tower of God discussion. I need to catch up on Tower of God discussion. Uh, so yeah, I guess I am very inundated in the series right now, if that's even the proper word. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw out, go watch their video, and I kind of got off topic. Uh, just talking about the channel itself, because I guess I just wanted to talk to all of you. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, like, if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it, and all that. Uh, subscribe for more Tower of God, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you up to there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. And if you want to talk to me or more of us on Discord, just ask and I'll give you a link to the Discord server. Uh, it's free and open for anybody. So yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.